Hi guys, this is the first of two videos in which we will define all of the terms we use to describe different igneous rocks. In this first video, we will focus on the terms we use for intrusive igneous rocks. These terms often depend on the formation of the different types of igneous rocks. So it's important to understand these terms and how we use them because the terms depend on how the rock is formed, which then dictates the igneous textures which we can observe. In general, rocks can either be ultramafic, mafic, intermediate or felsic. And then they can be classified as crystalline or glassy or fragmented, which all depends on how the molten rock has cooled and solidified, whether it was an intrusive or extrusive igneous rock. We can place all igneous rocks into these two main categories of intrusive and extrusive. Just quickly, if you haven't watched the videos on intrusive and extrusive volcanic activity, or the video that defines ultramafic, mafic, intermediate and felsic magmas, I would suggest you maybe go and watch these videos before you continue with this one. So after we've defined the rock as intrusive or extrusive, we can then use all of these terms here to describe the rock even further. These terms are all used to describe specific features of igneous rocks. And then finally we have the terms of euhedral, anhedral and subhedral. These terms are used to describe the crystal formation that we can see within the igneous rocks. In this video, we will just be having a look at the intrusive terms and the terms that we use to describe crystal formation. In the next video of this two-part series, we will be having a look at the terms we use to describe extrusive igneous rock. So firstly, we classify the rock as ultramafic, mafic, intermediate or felsic. Ultramafic rock has less silicon, which then means there is minimal quartz within the rock, which makes the rock darker, as quartz is quite a light-coloured mineral. Felsic rock, on the other hand, has the most silica in it, which means it has the most quartz, and also it often has the most feldspar, and this occurs because of Bowen's reaction series. In the felsic rock down here, the pink grains are feldspar, and in this here, we see the quartz. Here, we have the dark minerals with only small amounts of quartz contained within the ultramafic rock. So, generally we can say that felsic rock is lighter in colour and ultramafic rock is darker in colour. The intrusive and extrusive rocks that we see here have almost the same chemical composition. However, they have experienced very different cooling processes. The intrusive rock has cooled quite slowly, so therefore we can see the crystal grains within the rock, and they are quite evident in these photos here. The extrusive rock has cooled very quickly, which means that we cannot see many crystal grains within the rock. However, in comparing their coloration and how light they are, we can say that they are very similar rocks in their chemical composition, but very different in their formation. So first to talk about the terms we use to describe intrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive igneous rocks are almost always crystalline as they cool slowly below the Earth's surface. The term holocrystalline means that we can see the crystals with the naked eye, and all of these samples here are clearly hollow crystalline. Phaneritic means it has a texture of a hollow crystalline rock, which means it has a texture where we can feel the grains of the crystals on the surface of the rock. Porphyritic means we have large crystals in the rock, which are then surrounded by a sea of smaller crystals, as we can see in these samples here. This means that the rock has experienced two stages of cooling. First cooling underground, where it has formed the larger grains, and then it has reached the surface where it has cooled quickly, making the rest of the molten rock have small crystal grains. Phenocryst is the word used to describe the large crystals of a porphyritic rock. So here we can see many phenocrysts. The ground mass is the smaller crystals surrounding the phenocrysts. In this rock here, the red colored crystals are the ground mass. The last term we use to describe intrusive igneous rock is pegmatite. Pegmatite is a type of igneous rock that has very large crystal grains, up to 10 centimetres across. In this case, the large crystals do not necessarily indicate that the rock has taken a very long time to cool within a pluton. Pegmatite can actually form in dikes and sills. Normally we would assume that these large crystals form deep in the earth in large plutons and take very long to cool. However, these crystals can form in dikes and sills, which actually cool much faster 
and normally produce smaller crystals in igneous rocks. But in the case of pegmatite, the large crystals form because the molten rock has a very high water content. This water allows the atoms to move more quickly as the rock cools down, allowing larger crystals to form. Euhedral, anhedral and subhedral are terms we use to describe how the crystals have formed within an igneous rock. Euhedral means the crystals are well formed with clear faces and sharp edges. Here we can see a euhedral crystal. Anhedral crystals are opposite to euhedral, where the crystal is not well formed. We can still, however, see the boundaries between different crystal grains, as you can see in this image here, where we have one crystal next to another. Subhedral is the term used to describe rocks where the crystal structure is euhedral at times and anhedral at other times. As we can see in this rock here, where we have clear crystal faces, and then anhedral regions where there are no clear crystal structures.